Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our Cooking for Wellness with Central Ohio Urology Group. We're very thankful to be able to partner with Coog to be able to provide the first Thursday's uh, Cooking for Wellness class. And we are excited to be here with dietitian Emily Sullivan and uh, Chef Jason Johnson. And tonight they're going to be doing uh, uh, reduced waste leftovers reimagined so chef has two different recipes the zupa toscana and zucchini yes. chicken enchiladas so chef which one are we going to start with first we're going to start with the uh zucchini chicken enchiladas um i think this is a really cool recipe that is uh family friendly um and it's kind of gives some a little different you can have your kids or grandkids to help out with this recipe um, and it's something fun for them. And with this recipe, we're using leftover um, uh, chicken that you may have, you know, you've gotten to purchase that rotisserie chicken from your uh, local grocer and, you know, you've eaten a couple pieces, but then you still have some left and you don't know what to do with it. You picked up all the meat and um, yeah, you can make a chicken salad. Yeah, you can make some, but this is just something a little different that I think would be fun. Uh, nice weeknight, um, easy and quick weeknight dinner that you can do that the kids will enjoy um, also. Uh, and you don't have to worry about it not being healthy per se. So it's just another, you know, everybody likes Taco Tuesday, right? So maybe for your next Taco Tuesday, this could be a really great healthy uh, version uh, that you could do um, and that the kids would enjoy uh, in a sense. Um, I love a good enchilada, so basically we're going to take the carbs out of this and substitute and have zucchini uh, instead. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and chime in um, real quick to talk about this. Um, so one thing I like to point out when thinking about recipes and thinking about meals and what you're going to be eating, even with your meals or even with your snacks, you want to try to get as many of the six major food groups in that you can um, to get optimal nutrition, a well-rounded meal or snack. So with this dish specifically, we hit four out of the six major food groups with this easy um, go-to um, meal <clears throat> that we have put together. So with the zucchini boat, um, the six major food groups in total, that it's dietary fat, protein, dairy, vegetable, fruit, and grain. Um, there's this, I'm gonna reference this thing, this thing called my plate. If you Google my plate, that's really what your meal should look like. 80% of the time to include all the different food groups. And this specific meal contains um, vegetable oil. So that's going to be your dietary fat. So we get that in. It has chicken, which is going to meet your protein. It has um, cheese, which is going to meet your dairy. It has obviously the zucchini, which is a vegetable. So that's going to meet your vegetable. So we're really getting a lot of um, the food groups in with this dish. And that's something to think about when you're building your meals. Of course, so you're getting all those, basically all the major food groups in this. So you don't have to feel guilty about it. And it's really delicious because like I said, um, who doesn't like tacos or um, Mexican cuisine? So it's going to build all those flavors up. And that's what we're doing right here. Instead of regular onions, we just have some green onions that we've chopped up and we're just going to kind of lightly saute those um, in the pan. And this is going to actually build a little flavor since we're sauteing. We're going to bring out the natural flavor um, in um, the scallions. And then we're going to add a little bit of minced garlic because, of course, garlic makes everything better. <laughs> Saute that around until it becomes fragrant. And then we have a mixture, a seasoning blend of um, smoked paprika, of course. Uh, oregano, uh, chili powder, and uh, maybe a little bit of granulated onion or so. And I'm putting those in here now before I put in because it's going to bloom or it's going to basically um, really make alive those uh, seasonings, give it really nice flavor. And this is just your leftover rotisserie chicken that you have pulled off from the rest of that uh, rotisserie chicken that you bought from your deli. Just going to put that in there 
it's already cooked, right? So all you're doing is really just kind of warming it through, getting it flavored with the those Mexican spices and herbs. We've got the green onions, we've got the chili powder, the smoked paprika. So we're just really adding flavor. We just want to build the flavor of our chicken. And then we'll add just a pinch of salt. So when you're at the grocery store, if you're going to buy a zucchini or really any vegetable, the deeper the color is going to be the best, um, kind of just roll of thumb. So when you're looking at a zucchini, the, the darker green is what you kind of want to grab. It's going to be the most rich in nutrients. I'm going to add just a little bit of this cheese. It's just a low-fat Mexican cheese blend. And when I say Mexican cheese blend, it's usually like a, a blend of um, cheddar and... Um, what they call queso, uh, quesadilla cheese. Um, but this is just a low fat one. We're just gonna add that in because that cheese is gonna also act as a binder. Mm -hmm. And then we'll add a little bit of salsa. Just a nice, you know, always look at the jar. Um, if you're not making your own, just look at the jar and make sure you have one that's low sodium. Um, we're just adding just enough in there just to kind of bring it together like a nice little mixture because we're going to stuff our zucchini um, with this. So we've just added plenty of flavor to this from the salsa, the cheese, the spices. So it's a really nice mixture that'll go in our zucchini. So we got some decent sized zucchini and depending on what time of year it is, um, a growing season or so, it uh, depends on um, also, what and how soft, what the size is of your zucchini. So these are just what I would call like a personal size if you have uh, kids or grandkids. And I'm just splitting it down the middle. So I have two halves. Split it right down the middle. So one thing I want to point out about um, adding the salsa to the dish and really adding salsa or um, tomatoes specifically to a dish, um, tomatoes contain vitamin C. And so any dish that you add that to, so it could be marinara sauce, it could be tomatoes to your tacos, it could be salsa to this dish. Um, <clears throat> the vitamin C is gonna help absorb the other nutrients like iron um, and other nutrients in the dish. So you'll get optimal absorption by adding in things like tomatoes specifically or other vitamin C um, fruits and vegetables. Emily, I had heard that if you cook tomatoes, you get more lycopen. Is that the right word? Um, from a tomato, is that true? Or is that just um, a myth that's out there about food? Um, definitely could be true. When you cook a true. vegetable, um, <clears throat> you are kind of breaking it down so that it can be better absorbed. So there is probably some truth to that. Chef Jason, do you know anything about that? I am not sure. I have heard that too. Um, I'm not short of the truth of it, but I've heard, I've definitely heard that by cooking it, that you do get more, um, but again, I can't verify that. Right. So, yeah, heating, so heating it up with the chicken is, is um, a potentially beneficial thing as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's just kind of rule of thumb is when you are cooking it, um, you can absorb it just easier and better. So in your intestines, it's gonna be more likely because it's already started kind of breaking it down. So you can really just like soak it in and absorb it in your intestine. Raw is great. Um, it's just a little bit more difficult to absorb. Definitely 100% doable, but just kind of rule of thumb. And Chef, it looks like you're making boats with just using a spoon. I am just using a spoon, no fancy kitchen gadget. I just have a regular spoon here and I'm taking it. Now, of course, if I had a smaller spoon, I could just literally take, take that spoon and just really go right down it, just depending on what size your zucchini is. And really all you're doing is just um, scooping out that middle. My spoon is a little larger than the inside of my, so I'm just kind of cutting on both edge with the spoon because the, the middle is kind of tender. And, uh, and then I'm able to scoop out the middle. Now, if you don't want to have any waste with this, what you could do with the middle is chop it up mm -hmm. and mix it in with the chicken. Oh. That's what I was just about to say. So that you have no waste at all. 
Yep, that's exactly where my brain was going. I wondered if I you were possibly- I just thought of that because you guys have seen me throw away the middles. <laughs> and I just thought of that as I was scooping this out, like, why can't we just keep use this? <laughs> We can add that in with our chicken and salsa mixture, and then we we're getting all the nutrients that this uh, zucchini can afford us. Well, I can talk more on the specific uh, nutrients with zucchini. So, using this for this dish or replacing noodles in general with zucchini noodles, it's a more common thing that's coming about. Lasagna or spaghetti, um, really anything. They're they're replacing it with zucchini and calling them zoodles and um, <clears throat> use it. The benefit of that is um, this is a vegetable and it's a green vegetable, a deep green. So there's going to be um, a lot of fiber in there. And so it's going to help improve your digestion um, and also help regulate your blood sugar levels. Um, and then also with this particular vegetable, being able to help regulate your blood sugar levels by having that fiber draw those. Um, it also, you're replacing the higher carb noodle with this. So that in turn is going to help regulate your blood sugar levels as well. So it's kind of a double there. Uh, it's also just rich in vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, just, just a ton of um, health benefits to this in general. So really easy. And this is why I say this is something you can get your kids or grandkids to get involved because who doesn't like making little cute boats like this? You know, kids like little shapes and special shapes and things like that that kind of uh, accommodate them. So these little personal size uh, zucchini boats, I'm sure would definitely be a hit. Um, I would say with my kids, but they think they're too old to have cute little stuff. So they would probably care less. Um, but if you have smaller children, um, I think they'll get a kick out of this. And, and then they don't actually realize that it's something healthy. <laughs> and Chef, when you're putting that in the boat, are you mounding it up so it's a nice... Um, um, I don't want to mound it too much, but you know, you want to be able to have enough in every bite because you're going to add a little bit of salsa and you're going to add um, some cheese to the top of this. But I also want to make sure that I'm able to get all of those ingredients in every bite. I'm just going to take a little bit of my salsa, just kind of. Doop -de -doop. Presentation, it's looking good. <laughs> now, if you wanted to, you could hide, you know, some other vegetables in your chicken mixture. You know, we took some what we were scooping out of the zucchini and mixing it in there, but if there were some other vegetables that you wanted to kind of hide in there if you're feeding uh, kids, um, you could hide that in there also. I know that a common one is um, that I hear where you can hide easily is if you um, shave off broccoli pieces. It's so fine that you mm -hmm. can't even know that it's in there. And same with carrots, if you shave it down really, um, really into small pieces. You can also, if we're going off on a tangent here, you can also put shaved carrots in pretty much any baked dish that you make and hide those vegetables in there. Like if you're baking bread or muffins, you can stick yes. them in there and you won't even know. Uh, it's a great way to just hide the vegetables and increase the nutrient consumption. And even if you wanted to add any type of grain, um, mm -hmm. if you had some quinoa, you mm -hmm. could mix in here, cook off some quinoa, mix it in, uh, cook, uh, cook it off, chill it down, and then add it in here with this chicken mixture. And then you're able to add a nice um, whole grain into this dish. And then it'll be a complete uh, dish. That's actually really cool that you mentioned that because I said that this um, dish completed four out of the six food groups. And if we added a grain to it, then it would be five out of the six. So that's really incredible that you mentioned that. And we so I think you guys can see. There's a, a question in the chat um, that says, can I use squash, acorn, um, chayote, butternut squash instead of zucchini, or maybe half of the avocado filled? Um, now, I have heard, and I guess I have to take my own personal bias, but warm avocado just mentally, but um, I, I would think you could do that with an avocado. 
Um, an acorn squash, most definitely you could stuff an acorn squash um, in the same exact way um, because you can leave the skin on and now that can be your receptacle. So you can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can kind of cut it in half, stuff it with whatever, and that would be really good. You know, add some corn, some black bean, some quinoa, uh, all those things inside of the acorn squash and, you know, cover it the same way we're doing here and then bake that off. Now, the only thing is, is I would probably par bake the acorn squash first um, because it's a little more denser than the zucchini. And so um, realize if you're using rotisserie chicken or so, that's already cooked. And so if you par bake the, the acorn squash off first, then all you're doing is once adding everything in, and then really melting the cheese and warming your filling up inside of that. If you just did it straight from raw state, um, your filling may dry out because, or your cheese is going to burn because um, it'll get done before the acorn squash actually becomes tender um, or cooked through. Great, thank you. We're just going to stick those in the oven, about 375. Because like I said, all we're doing is warming the chicken through and melting the cheese. So about 375 for just a couple of minutes, um, just so it can cook. And then we'll garnish it with some, uh, you could have some cilantro or some green onion um, to, to uh, garnish it from, from there. Anyone have any questions? Simple enough recipe, like I said, quick, easy, and uh, kid friendly. And the next recipe is one of my favorites, probably one of my favorite soups um, <laughs> of all time. And uh, whether I'm, you know, you guys know at the restaurant who serves it <laughs> or I make it myself, um, it is definitely one of my favorites. Um, that's nice and hearty, um, but also, you know, it's got some good, good uh, components to it. And with this recipe, you know, this is just using up some leftover, say, baked potatoes. You know, you don't want to throw them out or you couldn't finish it all. Um, this is just a different way to turn it into something else, repurpose it. I think when we think about repurposing, because a lot of times you have leftovers. And if you're in my household, I grew up with <laughs> you ate those leftovers until they were done. Um, you know, but my household, my kids, after day well, I might as well say after day one and a half, they're done with it. So you have to get creative on how do I turn this into something else without throwing it out, without wasting it per se. Um, and so these are just ways that you can think about that. You know, if you do go out to eat and go out to dinner or so, and, you, you know, everybody gets the beloved doggy bag. Now, let's be honest. What's the percentage that you're actually going to end up eating the remainder of that dish once I you get home? Do. <laughs> I'm a big leftover girl. I make a meal and I live by myself and I, I have to eat it for five days and I eat it for five days. Like I do. You're, you're good, Emily. I can usually do three and then the other two days goes in the freezer. <laughs> yeah, I've just trained myself and I'm like, I don't even want this anymore. So I've been getting in the habit now of freezing some of it because it's too, it's too much. Well, <clears throat> like my, my wife, she's good for getting a doggy bag and bring it at home. And then it sits in the refrigerator uh, for two days. Um, and then I end up having to throw it out. And I'm like, you knew when you packed that up that you weren't going to end up. If you don't eat it that later that evening, if it's not too late, if it hits the next day, most likely it's probably not gonna be uh, heated up again and, and actually finished. So this is just one of those ways that you can think 
differently that even if you don't, then you, you're making sure you're still getting your money's worth. What are things that you already have in your refrigerator, especially in the winter, fall time? If you have uh, a, a bunch of vegetables in your freezer, it's always good to take leftovers and turn them into a soup or a stew. Um, really some good or, or throw it in a, in a, a whole grain um, peel off or so. Something like that. Think of how can I, you know, make sure that I'm getting my money's worth by sometimes clearing out some stuff in my fridge and making sure that I finish these leftovers some way or some somehow. So first and foremost, one of my favorite soups is Zupa Tuscan. Um, and so basically it just translates as Tuscan soup. So one of my favorite Italian soups that many people know it from uh, Olive Garden. Um, real simple to make. And we're going to use our leftover baked potatoes from our steakhouse dinner from last night uh, that we, we just weren't able to, to get to. And so stuff that you might already have at home, but we got some onion. Got that or we'll saute our onions. A lot of times, you, you know, you see a lot of recipes start with onions. And, um, yeah, they taste good, but you never realize that those onions are what are um, starting a layer of flavor. So we, when we add those onions to it, that's the base flavor that we're kind of sauteing those to get a lot of that flavor out, out, of, out of those uh, onions. So we have those, and then we have some... Turkey Italian sauce. Now you could take these out of what we call out of the casings and um, you know crumble it up and cook it that way. Um, or you can cook, cook them as they are in the links and then cut them up or dice them up. I actually um, kind of slice them as I cook them. So I'm able to really just kind of open it up <laughs> and take all of the inside, crumble it into the base of our soup. Just like that. Got my fire loose enough. <clears throat> Just add that in there. Now our our sausage is already cooked. Our potato really is technically cooked because it was a baked potato. Um, so really, you're, all you're doing, once again, is uh, warming things through. Makes the quickest and simplest uh, repurposed meal. Of course, if you don't have turkey Italian sausage, you know, if you have some ground turkey or some ground chicken, um, definitely you could use that in here, too. Questions so far? Anybody made Zupa Toscana of, um, at home or from scratch? I've actually never had the um, Zupa or what's what's it called? Zupa, Zupa Toscana. Oh, okay, okay. Um, never had that. Really? Yeah, never. So I'm kind of learning. Really great okay. Italian soup. Um, I make it. And um, I usually use red potatoes because they're they they hold up better as a in a soup that's going to be cooking. So I usually use red potatoes. Okay. Um, and um, well, when you think potatoes, I can't talk about potatoes. Um, so a lot of times people um, mistake when if you would get a lot of my muscle cramping people are like you should eat a banana that's just what people say for the potassium uh -huh. um banana right. is actually very low on the list as far as potassium a potato is number one so if you're struggling with muscle cramps um maybe in the summer if you're feeling dehydrated and your muscles are cramping up more um really for just any reason um you want to eat a potato that is literally what you want to do that has the most potassium that you could need um is and also the other what is that, it? Ellie, is that for just white potatoes or do um um 
sweet potatoes have the same amount or is it should we uh, focus on like the white potato the red you know the red or even yellow yes sweet potatoes wouldn't count in this category they have a lot of other great benefits but they don't have the um, potassium that we would need okay thank you yeah um and so other benefits of a white potato specifically um I always eat the skin. Um, and if you do take the skin off, there is benefits, but the skin holds a lot of fiber. Um, and I talk about fiber a lot because um, it's very important. And a lot of times we're not getting enough fiber in our diet because you have to be intentional with your fiber intake for improved digestion um, and absorption. So um, having a potato with the skin on um, is gonna provide you with a lot of great potassium and fiber. Those are the two things. <clears throat> I always leave the skin on unless, you know, it's for some application that the skin would end up being a nuisance. But um, yeah, I always leave the skin on uh, for that, that reason. But I was not aware that potatoes are a great source of potassium. Yep, they're number one on the list. So, wow. Yeah. And Jason, was that kale you were putting in? Oh, yes. I was going to say, so what I added is, is added in some kale. Now into this. Now, typically you see kale. Um, if you don't have kale, you can definitely use uh, spinach okay. in here. That's awesome. I've so added kale. I added a bay leaf. Okay. Um, and, and then I added some salt and some, some thyme. And then this is just some fat-free organic vegetable broth. And we'll let everything simmer away in there. We'll kind of chunk up our potatoes. Our, remember, our potatoes technically are already cooked. So I'm going to get fancy with it because <laughs> it really is a rustic type of uh, soup. So this dish, um, when we're to when we're trying to come uh, create meals that have as many of the food groups as possible. This one has your kale or your spinach, that's gonna be your vegetable. It has your dietary fat because you have the oil. Um, it has your protein with the chicken. So we're hitting a lot of the food groups as well here, um, just in making this dish. Chunking that up. The soup comes together in no time. Mm -hmm. It's not a soup that takes all day. Um, probably the most that time will take you is uh, cooking off the sausage or the, the ground, you know, turkey or ground chicken that you may be using. So Jason, so um, I, I apologize, Emily. Um, no, okay. I was just thinking about the protein part of that. You'd use uh, rotisserie chicken for the first dish if you still had extra um, shredded chicken, would that work in the soup? Yes, that, that could go in here too. Great. That thinking. wouldn't be bad. Yep, good thinking. That's awesome. I don't normally um, have those kind of ground meats in my freezer. <laughs> yes, you could definitely, you know, throw that in here. Um, it would, I mean, I don't know what the Italians or the Tuscans would say about that, but <laughs> um, no, but I'm pretty sure that it, it wouldn't hurt um, to throw that in there and make a complete, uh, you know, adding more protein in there. I was trying to find, I normally would add some red pepper flakes. People are afraid of red pepper flakes, and I don't know, uh, Emily, can you speak to red pepper flakes? A lot of people are afraid, you know, because they think red pepper flakes, and it's, it's, it's spicy, um, but a little red pepper flakes in dishes um, it not only helps to bring out some certain notes of flavor, um, enhanced flavor, I should say, um, but if I'm not mistaken, there are some nutritional value to red pepper flakes too. Well, I definitely am one of those that are a little bit scared of red pepper flakes because I overdid it one time and I, it burnt my mouth. So I can't necessarily speak to the nutrition value at this time. I can uh, get back with you on that, but I know that I am one of those people that thinks it's a little hot because I ruined it for myself. <laughs> I've heard that there was nutritional value in the peppers because of the, is it capsin? Capsaicin. 
Capsaicin. Oh, okay. <clears throat> that would make Cap sense. Capsaicin. That's it. Yeah, because that, like I said, I think a lot of people just initially like, oh, red pepper. And, and no, but in moderation, like anything, you know, you could put enough in there where it's not spicy, but it, like I said, it just adds um, another depth or it helps bring out some of the flavors. Yeah, just from like a quick Google search here, it says that it can help relieve um, digestive issues, pain and inflammation. Um, so that's new to me, but that's, that's really cool that it um, helps aid in that. Now our boats are finished and we're just going to garnish the top with some onion. So cutting it on the diagonal there, that, uh, that's for more for presentation than anything, right? Yes, more for presentation. The reason your dish is now uh, $2 more, no. <laughs> <laughs> So with the zucchini boats, um, what kind of um, sides would you serve with that? Because you already have your vegetable with the zucchini, you have your protein and a little bit of fat from the, the cheese. So what would you serve with that? And you, would, uh, and you would need to serve anything else because it would be a complete meal, unless you did like a little side salad. I apologize, Jason, I didn't hear that. I said, um, like if you mixed in quinoa into it like we were suggesting, then um, it would be a complete meal. But if you wanted to quote unquote have something else, you could um, maybe a little side salad. Well, the only food group that we're missing here would be like a fruit if we have already added the grain into there. So if you're trying to do it for that purpose, then that having a side of fruit, if you're meeting, if, you're, if that was your goal, it was to try and get every food group in. Um, but it sounds like you know, just with having the, the zucchini boat, I mean, we're very close to meeting all those food groups and there's a lot of nutrients involved. Um, I think that having a side of whatever your preference is, like when making the meal, I'm sure Chef JC can talk more of like what would go good with it, um, but it could be anything like potato salad or um, like macaroni and cheese, like anything, um, bread and butter, green beans, like another, another like side or whatever would just go good with it really preference wise um, but as far as food group wise we would only really be missing a fruit so if you were trying to hit that you could just add a side of fruit or have that for dessert or something thank you that's looking really delicious <clears throat> Looking very, very gorgeous. delicious. Yes. That cheese is just melted perfectly. <laughs> it looks great. And how nice that you can just lift the plate up to the camera instead of having to walk around the island. <laughs> that is a, that's a great touch today. So our soup is technically um, done. And I know it is because I can smell it. Remember all you're doing, your potatoes are done. Your, your sausage is cooked. Um, all you're doing was kind of heating everything, getting mm -hmm. Marianne in there together, all those flavors, all those layers of flavor. Oh, that really is. I had some red pepper flakes, but um, they spilt on the floor. <laughs> so um, wow. at the very end, you, you would normally add like um, a little bit of cream and that mm -hmm. just helps to balance it out. But if we want to make this healthy, you can still make it creamy by one of two things. You could take some um, cannelli beans and puree those up really, really, really nice and smooth. And then you would integrate those in and it would give you that nice, smooth richness to it. Um, and it still would keep it Italian. Um, so it would give you the sense of a creaminess. Um, or you could just use a dairy free, um, uh, uh, dairy free milk like almond milk or something like that. Or I'm putting a little twist on it because this is 
a light um, unsweetened coconut milk. Yes. <clears throat> then dairy free would be the key there if anyone would have any sort of um, intolerances or anything like that where you would need to. And, and the coconut milk specifically is gonna provide just a little something extra. There's just a different type of flavor in there that's gonna be beneficial and unique. Um, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio with like a low fat or a whole milk. So you can kind of look at it like that um, using the same amount as if you were to do a dairy one, but to add that creaminess. Um, <clears throat> and then when you purchase it, I believe it's room temperature. And then as soon as you open it, you put it in the refrigerator. Am I wrong? Yes. Okay. That is exactly what you would do is uh, you would remove it from its can. At that point, I want you to open it and put it in a uh, airtight container. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say um, for food safety wise, would you be able to have it for about five days? And that's just rule of thumb for any sort of after opening or um, leftovers would be a five day rule. Is that the same for coconut milk then? What do you think? Yeah, about five days if, okay. if that. Okay, so here's the question. If you had if you had that coconut milk opened after five days, is that freezeable? Can you freeze it up in like ice cube trays? And mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, you can. you can definitely freeze it. Would you freeze it initially after opening or after that five day though? I think it would be initially. You would have to well it depends on, you know, you have to ask yourself, do I will I honestly be making something else with this in the next five days? If if you don't think you will be, then I would go ahead and freeze it. That's a great idea to put them in little ice cube trays. Little, that's a really cool idea. I'm just pulling out my little thyme sprigs because nobody wants to bite into those. That and your bay leaf. <laughs> and the beloved bay leaf. <laughs> because how many times have you bitten into those in a day? Oh. <laughs> we would uh, make a soup after Thanksgiving, um, the turkey noodle soup, you know, using the leftover turkey um, and the bones and that. And we had peppercorns and bay leaf. And trust me, you definitely wanted to make sure that those were out. I've tasted both. I bit into both and prefer to make sure they're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to add some roasted red peppers in here, I'm a person that I love color. So if you wanted to add some like roasted red peppers in here, um, that adds vitamin C and a little pop of color that, um, you know, really uh, helps um, the eye uh, translate deliciousness because of the color. Absolutely. We have a question. Um, in recipes that call for coconut milk, can I substitute coconut cream? Yes, I think you can. Am I, I think I'm going to say yes. Would you say yes, Jason? I would, but I, I think it really also depends on what the dish is. Because your, your coconut cream, of course, is um, a lot thicker. Mm -hmm. um, so depending on what the recipe is, like for this one, um, I would not. I mean, it's a little too thick. Um, but the, depending on what it is, you, you may not be able to substitute cream for the milk. Thanks for clarifying that. That's good to know. We just got a little parsley here. That looks really good. And yeah, and I could see adding like a, a red pepper to that, just as you said, Jason, to add a little yeah. bit of color to it. And of course, I'm also a pepper fan, so I would enjoy that. <laughs> now, if this was Angie, we would leave out the red peppers. <laughs> uh, she's not a bell pepper fan. Uh, but, but a little, because um, uh, when I make Zupa, um, typically, I do it just like this. Um, with the uh, Italian, like turkey Italian sauces. Uh -huh. And I also use a smoke sausage. Or oh, wow. I found a chicken and dewy sausage. So I'll add something like that in there too. So almost like two sausages and the red potatoes, kale. Um, so really, really great flavor and texture and all that kind of stuff. It's really good. 
sure sounds like it. Well, so everybody on the uh, call today, we will have these recipes um, up on our website. But what I'll do is I will email them to you as well after tonight's class because uh, it might take a day or two to get up there. And we I just saw another chat come in. Um, um, for recipes for cakes or desserts, can I substitute cocoa milk to cocoa cream? Now that's probably one of those that I would not then because uh, baking or desserts are very, very sensitive and using a cream, which when it calls for milk may totally change up the, um, because you got to realize there's a different fat content. And so that may change the whole um, end result of whatever it is you're baking with. If you're baking a cake or so, um, or muffins or whatever it is, it may actually change the way that that, um, particular dessert uh, comes out. So those that's not interchangeable in that because baking is an exact science. And so by adding something that is more uh, has more fat in it may uh, definitely alter um, the end result. That's good to know. Yeah. You could probably get away with it more and just like cooking a dish. Um, you know, but uh, baking, I would not take that risk. <laughs> but does anybody else have any questions for Chef Jason or Dietitian Emily before we end tonight's class? I'm telling you, it, it would have been, guys, somebody should have came in person because this soup smells wonderful. <laughs> rub it in, Jason, rub it in. <laughs> Well, we are very thankful um, for uh, you, Chef Jason, and you, Emily, for spending uh, this afternoon with us with Cooking for Wellness with Coog. Um, we're grateful for Central Ohio Urology Group to continue to partner with us, even though these cooking classes um, are currently Zoom only. And we do appreciate you guys um, spending your talents and your expertise and your time with us. And um, the uh, chat says, thanks for the info. I learned something today. So thank you, everybody who's joined us um, look for those emails that I will send you and then in the next couple of days those will also be loaded on to our website under the program and services tab under cooking for wellness recipes we have our recipes archived all the way back to 2017 so it's a wealth of information so okay. again Emily and Jason thank you so very much greatly appreciate you Thank, Thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. And uh, go try these recipes out um, when you get them. Try them out at home and uh, let us know if you tried them. You know, share with us, take a picture, send it in, email it so that we can share on our on uh, Cancer Support social media. Um, we want to know that, you know, these tips and tri tricks are helping uh, um, you in your uh, cooking um, uh, endeavors at home. 